healing as well. Can he find a target? He's gonna flash back under the tower. Shock flash there. Baker making it out to safety. Scout are looking to follow up the healing now coming in, trying to find the one for one, but Scout will stand strong. But Gala, Gala. dead force to safety. Shock rooms stacked. Zayos can't find the angle, but the shutdown coming through for Baker. T1 taking the fight anyway. Scout given to the Aatrox as tribute, and now Gala's in trouble. T1 coming alive. They see the window of opportunity. They see the weakness in the armor of LNG, and they tear it asunder. The fans are going crazy already, and T1 stepped into the Sajik Indoor Gymnasium in Busan today with a mission and to keep up the honor for the LCK, and they are on match point already. It went so fast, and to be honest, that game two went so, so fast. Um, it started from the first place. Talk me through why T1 was able to get such a good start, especially around that Herald. Well, we've, we've pulled a pretty cool sequence of events that mm -hmm. It illustrates an issue that is sometimes really hard for casters to communicate, and it, and it is the change of tempo uh, from team to team. So we see T1 send their whole team up here to Rift Herald and fully commit to this. But we know that T1 have this in mind where they've invested a lot in bottom lane power with two Hail of Blades AD carries, two Lethality AD carries, and so they want to stack dragons. So they know that by giving up this Herald, they are then going to give up the priority and the tempo for uh, LNG to be able to push out mid lane and then rotate from mid lane down to bottom lane to get these turret plates onto Gala. The problem is, because T1 know this, they're trying to use these turret plates as bait so that they can then get a better setup for Dragon. They can get cooldowns off of LNG. And so you see the Ash Arrow plus the Teleport from Faker to be able to get the Maokai Ultimate out, as well as the Cleanse here off of Gala and the extra Flash from Hung. Then they can rotate over to the Dragon, push out Tarzan here, no Flash for him either, and continue on stacking their win condition. So even though they, they commit really hard to this Rift and spend a whole bunch of time up there and give up this, this turret plate money, they still get more back towards their win, their end win con. And for LNG, a couple of times you saw that the idea was correct in terms of, okay, we know this objective is something we need, but then they would get poked out or they would lose someone or they'd have to reset. It was always T1 with the right decisions and timing. Yeah, and I think the big thing here is the thing I loved about T1 is this is a return to form for them, right? Like we talked about how the play style kind of introduced by a lot of the LPL teams starting in Swiss, but moving into quarterfinals was this more bot cryo. Well, guess what? T1 loves this. This is Caria, I now believe, is 7-1 and one on this Ash pick. They love this early bot lane dominance going for these pushes. This was such a, like, reminiscent of their spring performances when they were setting the world's meta, not just the LCK meta, but, like, dictating what the world was playing. So this is such a comfort zone for T1, and it's great to see them show up and not only kind of evolve that meta further, but also a return to comfort for them. And I think a huge portion of having that opportunity to play around that bot side so well is because Owner is having a phenomenal series. This guy has consistently got these wards in in the early stages and has passed it so perfectly around what Tarzan is trying to do. Game one, he got on red buff and was able to then realize there was a split map happening. In this game then, he was able to turn it over with the ward on towards Raptors, where he was then transitioning then to go, okay, I can actually start to protect my bot side. I can start to get these massive leads. I can steal away the blue buff that Maokai never took. He has been so good at reading what Tarzan is doing and punishing LNG every step of the way. Oh, one and 20. Oh, what <laughs> yeah, a team player. Not bad. Uh, I think I have to stress how like out of sorts he looked in summer, especially when Faker wasn't there. He was kind of the lightning rod for criticism on this T1 team when they were struggling. So to see him come to this world stage and have such a great performance has been awesome. Faker looks in the zone, and just as a reminder, T1 at Worlds has never been eliminated earlier than the semifinals in all of their seven appearances, and you can see it right now in the quarterfinals. Kobe, they are on a different level. They have such clear focus. I mean, it it is twofold. I feel like there has been such heavy priority on the support counter picks and on the jungle diff. Tarzan yep. is not playing very well here <laughs> on stage, so LNG really need several individual members to step up, as well as try and come up with something to deal with this onslaught of, of bottom lane priority that T1 have been able to put together using Karia's flexibility.
Yeah, and I think the other thing is they're game planning around these drafts. Like, so not only are their drafts good, but their level ones have been great. They understand exactly what they need to do. Start the early dragon stacking around bot prio. This is how they love to play as a team. It fits perfectly. And I think this is why I want to see the zigs. Gala has been an incredible zigs. You get the push and bot. You can get control for dragon and rift out. That's what I want to see from this team. They're going to have to do something if they're going home. Let's see what happens in game three. Dracos, do you think T1 take it? At this point, I am inclined to think yes, Shox, based on the fact that they've shown two completely different drafts. They're once again on the red side, but the ultimate question is, can they continue to find these super advantageous bot lanes? Well, I think the ball is absolutely in LNG's court because T1 is just going to do the same thing if you let them, right? Like, clearly, they're going to play towards bot winning 2v2. They're going to keep blinding the Aatrox. They're going to keep doing all these things that have been working so well for them. And LNG have got to adjust, have got to show us that they have a different style that they can bring out. Whether it is going to be playing for a bot 2v2 that's winning, they're going to ban off the rel, so that is one change. Or whether they're just going to be bringing Tarzan more heavily down towards the bot lane to try to disrupt that 2v2. I feel like, yes, there have been errors and issues in all lanes, but T1 is controlling through 2v2, and it's been all about bot mostly to me. This Mauka ban from T1 is really interesting because I feel like the Sidus pick go, works Ori. really well. And yeah, you're 100% you're walking into the Ori here. We'll see if T1 wants to go with what a lot of LCK teams have been trying to do, which is the Akali counter pick. The uh, alternative, obviously, is the Azir, even though I feel like over the course of the tournament, it hasn't actually been that successful as a counter pick. Exactly. Yeah, we ha we just haven't seen people be able to effectively like get up on the Orianna and, and actually sweep him back in, which is pretty much the entire idea behind it. But T1 could go towards Akali. We'll see. It is a safe pick, most certainly. T1 have the luxury of being up two games, so can experiment a bit here. And I will say, when we were watching a lot of the LCK playoffs together, Chronicler, it did feel like you know, this was one of Faker's picks where he just looked so much better on. Because in the LCK, there was so much jungle attention thrown towards Faker against T1 from all kinds of different teams. And this is one of those picks where he can not only perform in the team fights, but he's able to stay safe in lane, get push. So it is absolutely a comfort pick for Faker. I don't think it's as iconically his pick as it is Scout's, but this is absolutely comfort for Faker. Cool. Oh. And, and yeah, this is a one-two combo that LCK teams have really gravitated very heavily towards because of the wall uh, poppy slam that you can get with the Azir. And it's also owner was one of our best poppies, was the one who, uh, if I remember correctly, started popularizing it within the LCK way back and used to be the champion that was basically perma banned against him. And I think it's also one of those things that really limits some other picks from being, you know, kind of gravitated yeah. towards. When you think about what Sika has been playing, well, all top laners that are meta basically have a dash. When you think about what Hong has been playing, all these engaged supports, well, they're kind of shut down by it as well. So I want to see what the changes are going to be now as Sichuani will be locked in. That again leads me to believe you're playing heavily towards top side. I think they just slam Jax here is kind of what I'm expecting. Jax or Renekton play heavily towards top if you're going to be locking in that early Sedge. So it is going to be the Renekton option, but I honestly love Zika's Jax throughout all of the LPL, so I kind of would have liked him to go towards it. I, I imagine T1 just slammed the Aatrox here again, Yeah. right? Like, even into the really strong 2v2 that you're going to face, uh, it feels to me like the crux of this game, of the series thus far, has not been who gets that top laner ahead. It's been who's been better at playing towards bot. And I feel like the Aatrox has actually been very successful oh. in surviving that. The Renata, though, has been permanently banned, uh, I think, by, by either team thus far. We'll get locked in blind here. And I love seeing the Renata come out. Obviously, a super high priority pick. They can now ban away anything they so choose to set up bot lane for success. They still have the luxury of counter pick for somewhere else on the map. Have to see where it's going to go. Poppy could also go into the top side if uh, she so chooses, or they so choose. And that is why we are seeing, you know, Caitlyn band out these long range champions. That is what Renata struggles into. Renata is really successful into these melee comps, into these short range comps that are forced to engage into you. You can answer this pick with long range, with poke, but Long has not been playing that style. And when you look over at the engage available, and you see an Orianna, you kind of know that they want some sort of pairing with that Orianna that is going to be the hard engage. So I feel like this is very much a read on the first three picks by Carry, who's saying they have to find some sort of hard engage pairing that is going to really make this comp bad to play into the Renata. And I'm wondering if it's going to be the Aatrox ban here or if they're happy with the power of their 2v2 to let Zeus play it anyway. I also really like the Kai'Sa ban there. I think that the biggest power uh, of the, uh, uh, or really the biggest weakness of Kai'Sa has been specifically when the Senna is available with Renata already locked in. Can't really go for any of that, so denying Gala uh, one of his best champions, definitely good call. I love the Gnar band though. Zayus is the best Gnar in the LCK bar none, and T1 have 
like an incredible amount of experience playing around it. And it's a really good negation pick. It's one of those picks that can stay safe. It doesn't necessarily require you to play towards it as, as heavily. So I do think that makes sense. Uh, this is going to be the Varus once again, though. With the sheer amount of tanky players on the opposite side, I wonder if we do see a transition to the on-hit Varus. It is an option. With Bailout especially. With Bailout especially. And this is a super oppressive bot lane 2v2. LNG, yeah, can build for the composition, but Hung outside of engage supports, this is going to be a, a tough task. Milio is fantastic, can outclass the Renata, but this is going to be a tricky one to navigate. I just don't really love their, their draft that much, I'm going to be honest. I do feel like LNG have kind of painted themselves into a corner a little bit. Um, they have no ability to really be on the front foot. Like, yeah, you can kind of fish with Sejuani ults, but it's pretty tough. I think you get an early Mikhail's, so there's going to be some cleanses and things like that that are going to keep you relatively safe from it. The engage options are really, really poor, I do think, for LNG. For LNG, I think the early game is going to become so incredibly important. They're going to have to be able to kind of absorb these engages, utilize the Breath of Life here with Melio to try to cleanse out, AoE cleanse out the CC that's going to be coming with the hostile takeover. That's kind of going to be the job here of Hong, and they're going to have to hope that this keep Scala safe, keep Scout safe, increase that space for them to take over a 5v5, but I feel like T1, especially with this Jace coming through, can play through sides, can be able to answer, can be able to poke, and I feel like they have got a lot more tools in their kit. Yeah, because LNG outside of the Orianna is playing, and even that isn't going to be uh, that good if you don't have control of the area already. A short-range composition into Poppy, Azir, and Renata, right? And I, and I do also think that with the limited engage, the only reliable two you have is a Sejuani, um, because your the Milio is only going to serve as counter engage. It is going to become so hard to play this game if you lose control early on. And when I look at the level of aggression that I'm expecting to come out from T1 when they have played these Jace, Renata, and various compositions, I'd be very worried for LNG. I am too, and I think we're going to see early Merc Treads on the side of T1 when there is not only the Sejuani, but there's also AP in the mid lane, there's a Renekton in the top lane. I think we're going to see Merc Treads. I think we're going to see Cleanse and maybe even early Mikhail's from Caria. And then the game is going to get ridiculously hard for LNG. So Tarzan, I think he needs to get active early. He needs to get active often. See if he can pair up with Zika, who is playing press the attack on this Renekton. So it's really all about the early game, it feels like. If they could slam home an advantage up on the top side against Zayas, they can maybe use that to take objectives, maybe use that to snowball the game. And in the first two games, T1 choked out LNG. Can LNG finally break the mold, break the formula, find their footing in this game three? It is do or die for the LPL third seed. Tarzan struggling a bit this series. See if he can do more on the Sejuani in the early game. T1 obviously with the entire crowd behind them. The last representative of the LCK here at Worlds 2023. LPL fans, got a cushy life right now. They already got three through, hoping to find a fourth, but it's going to take a miraculous turnaround as we go through the series. Then we show it. got three. Don't get greedy. Yeah. Anyway, if you think that's a laughable concept, <laughs> connect your League of Legends account with Prime Gaming to grab the exclusive Braum W emo. You can keck along with the rest of us. What the team wants to do. That just sounded like the most hello fellow kids. Hello fellow kids. Hey kids, if you'd hey. like to keck along with the rest hey, of us. I'm in my 30s, could you tell? Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. Anyway. I don't really have a response to this guy, so I'm very sorry. <laughs> okay, it's fine. I think I think it's a fun emote. It is. That's, that's the extent emote. of my opinion. I, I think making fun of the emote was making fun of Dracos. It's, it's an important no, no, distinction. I know. Yeah. Great emote. I'm but gonna I go get like, the emote. I feel like can I have to I have to jump to the defense of Dracos. Yeah. Oh, it's true. We Chronicler, you're the, on we this. the ones we love, as they say. You know. Yeah. Chronicler's on this positivity <laughs> hype. He keeps showing us this picture of a frog every time we do negative yeah. self talk. Yeah. Yeah. I don't do it. Okay. I won't. <laughs> Hopefully LNG aren't doing any negative self-talk either. Got to stay focused. Bot lane, again, has been a huge uh, weak point. A lot because T1 have consistently had the counter pick on the bottom side of the map. Not to individual player mistakes, but more just because they haven't really had agency in the first two games. Game three, going to be a bit of a different story. And Kerry is kind of unleashed. I mean, if he can play whatever his heart desires, just play for these winning 2v2s, and that's working for T1, then they are such a frightening team because we talked about it a lot, but this guy is so versatile. When he really was at his peak, it's kind of Carrier just going crazy. He was trying all kinds of different supports. He was trying all kinds of different styles. And that is where he is so incredibly hard to beat because he's so mechanically proficient. He's so flexible as a player, and he really knows how to get the maximum advantage out of these lanes. Yeah, during the uh, AD carry support meta within the LCK, it was just like you were playing down you were playing down a ban against T1. There was yeah. just no option. She had to ban Ash every single time. Tarzan and owner are going to meet. Walking in face to face. 
sustain damage. Neither side has that much, but right now a lot of damage coming in for Tarzan. Owner now just going to zoom his way out to safety. That's the phase rush proccing. Buckler coming in. Both sides squaring up with a big old golem here. Flash in. Whoa, bang, first blood! Owner living up to his name! Owner plays it out perfectly, gets the aggro back on a Tarzan. Does he get the blue? And he's oh. going to get the blue as well. As Tarzan retreats back, he gets too close to the wall. Owner sees the opportunity, and now he's going to try to cut off Scout here, potentially. Scout senses it and does walk the long way. But what a way to assert dominance in a match point game here. Tarzan having a rough series. Owner gets right in his face and leaves no question about who the better jungler is today. And, and this is coming from the guy that was the big underperformer on this roster. Isaiahs. Stepping in, lots of damage. They can now force a flash out to safety. Zayus holding on for now. Hex flash coming in. Poppy gonna try and save the day. Buckler goes in. A little bit of a slow going through. Zayus needs to be careful here. Can't walk too far forward. But owner just continuing to harass the E. Flashed away from owner everywhere he needs to be. And, and now it's a disaster. The lane is. Go I don't know if Zayus is gonna get his back as, but the lane is pushing into Zayus. Tarzan doesn't have flash. Will be able to at the very least clear his own jungle, but he's gonna be substantially behind here right from the get-go, and T1 find yet another early game lead. You used double flash and you didn't even get the Jace's flash. That is, I cannot overstate how bad that is for You're the Renekton's lane state. You're down 0-2, you just got solo killed in your jungle, then you both committed flash top to get absolutely nothing into a bad wave state, and now Zayus is gonna play crazy aggressive here, knowing he has that flash advantage. Zika is in a world of hurt. Then you look down to bot lane. Surely it's going well there. Well, bad news. You're getting pushed in and you're about to lose a play here to Karia and Guma, who have been playing incredible all series long. Your only strong point of the map was Scout in the mid lane, but that's going to collapse if both bot and top have priority, giving up so much room for owner to go wherever he wants to invade the jungle to contest these camps. And the fact that the early game is already falling apart in a match point situation for LNG again, it just feels like we've seen this game before. We know what comes next. And, and it's going to be up to Scout in this one, I think. Tarzan is going to have to farm his way back in the game. And the initial burst of Sejuani early on with Permafrost and the power over W and Aftershock is insane. But once your cooldowns are used and you don't have that available, and especially if, if the Poppy can find an angle into the wall, you're not going to be able to withstand the initial burst. Absolutely. And I just think Owner plays it out so incredibly well. Drops the hammer on him. Oh, dang. But damn, that was just so clean. I mean, he gets the aggro on him, uses the buckler. Now they're going to go aggressive bot side. Bottom side, Owner trying to work with a little bit of space. Hong has no mana. Gallop finds the initial route. The follow-up, good damage coming through from Gala. Potential, an opportunity to turn, but Owner sticking right on top of him. Phase rush now procced. Owner just going to zoom his little butt out to safety. Will be fine for now. LNG holding on in the 3v3, getting pressure here as well. A positive sign for their bot lane, but owner might look to respond. Oh, no hex flash coming through just yet. And in Gala and Hung both with flashes available. Not gonna run the risk. Baker oh. dodges the shockwave. Scout had six advantage, but he immediately is unable to find purchase with it. Well, and Scout knew as soon as Faker dodges that, he has to retreat because Faker was about to hit six. And if he stays up trading there, he's gonna get scooped back and he's likely gonna be dead. So T1 gonna use the mid prio, come down towards the dragon. It's still a big CS advantage for Scout. We haven't really gotten to watch that, but Scout doing a really good job. By far his best performance in the 1v1 throughout the series. And, and this is the man that was the MVP, right, of Summer, was able to carry this team, I think, uh, when the rest of the players weren't able to keep it together. Scout always was, is their biggest lead with a uh, just purely gained in the 1v1 advantage. But with the Oriana pick that we've seen, can skill insanely well, but not necessarily have the biggest impact. I think we saw this in the KT series as well. Is that lead going to be enough with how aggressive T1's playing this early game? And especially without a great ball delivery system. There's no easy pairing. He doesn't have the Rakan, he doesn't have the Wukong, he doesn't have that guaranteed the go Jarvan. button yeah. that is gonna place that ball for him in a fight onto the back line, and that's really what you want. You want that Axis onto Guma, onto Faker, and I think that is gonna be the difficulty for him in this game. It's again, and I feel like a broken record in a lot of these games, it's a bit about the engages here for LNG. They're going to have to come from multiple angles because they don't have any consistent engage. And it's going to be really tough when you're dependent almost entirely on a Sejuani to start off those fights. At this level, people are so good at dodging out. Yes. It's a little bit more reliable and immediate than the Maokai, perhaps, outside of the Maokai Flash W. So perhaps LNG can get more done with it. But if you feel like a broken record, it's because, again, we've seen similar patterns in all three games where ultimately 
even if individuals are landing well, even if Zika was landing well, it didn't matter. Zaya still found so many advantages in the team fights. Scout, even if he's landing well, if he can't press his advantage, if he can't use his advantage, then it does not matter in the face of T1. The one big difference, though, with this series compared to the previous ones, is that Gala isn't being set behind early. He has actually been able to uh, remain in a good position. The early gank being thwarted by Tarzan showing up when Owner was there as well actually ends up being big. And I think T1 was still able to stack a lot of the objectives. But it does mean, at the very least, that LNG should have a better opportunity once we get to the mid game to utilize the power of their AD carry. And it is showcasing the power of Emilio, right? In that yeah. 2v2, obviously a lot stronger than the Blitz or the Rakan. And it's going <laughs> to allow Gala to be way more aggressive, right? You get the additional range with the W, you have the safety and the move speed from the E, and you have that cleanse that is so valuable that is going to be there with the ulti to be able to answer what Carry is going to do. And it's also allowed Gala to play Ghost when generally against Renata, you always have almost to play six. Cleanse. Tarzan looking down here on the bottom side. Good initial damage. Nice pullback on the shockwave. Guma still standing for now. The bailout will buy enough time for them to get one kill back. Tarzan still standing, and that means Guma will fall. LG sure. find an angle on the bottom side, but here comes the hostile takeover. Oh, Finger knocking two, but the tower. It does not fire back. Owner does not have the angle to fall off on the Gala. He will just barely be able to find a Gala now trying to make it out to safety. T1 needs to get a kill back and return. Gala goes up. Gala goes down. But for now, he is still standing. Oh, oh. finding the dissonance. It is. Finding the speed up. Gala making it out and hope sparks anew for the side of LNG. What a dive there from LNG. Able to pull it off and get out. You thought they were screwed as we're going to have a, potentially a fight here on top side. When Karia found that angle for the hostile takeover, I thought it was over for LNG on that bot side. Faker came in, but they couldn't quite finish off the kills. And Gala makes the marathon play, running out to safety. And really big here is Karia at the onset of this play isn't actually six. So they're able to 100 to zero Guma. Charizard is crucially able to deny the bailout. And because Faker, when he goes in for the shuffle, doesn't actually have any backup damage, there isn't enough, right? He doesn't have the items yet. He doesn't have the burst. And with the heal, Hung and Gala are able to path towards the top side and dodge Owner, who even with the flash, doesn't get the wall uh, knock into Gala. Doesn't get the wall knock, and critically, his Q missed, and that's why he really ran out of damage here. You can see, you know, procking that little heal on the auto there from Gala gives him the speed up with the fleet footwork being able to kite it out, and then the dissonance from Scout gives the additional move speed to really be able to get out of there. So frustrating for T1. And it's a very slight lead, but it is that spark of hope, as you said, Drake, goes for LNG for what feels like the first time. Oh, as we might have another return play here from Tarzan! and repeat, finding the lineup, finding the angle, instant damage coming through from Falio, so they can get the root as well. If they could find the mark, but nice counter punch coming in from Guma, using the ult to stop the play in its tracks. Gala continuing to step up. Desperate to get a little bit more here, but has to be careful. The mark now coming through. Bar is good damage. Guma wants to finish it, oh! and he gets it! Absolutely outplayed in the 1v1. Guma finds the kill. It's a 2v3, but T1 are on fire today. Guma and Karia crushing through Gala and Hong, and just when we thought they had some hope, they take it right back away. And we haven't discussed it yet, but Guma Yushi's playing on hit. Like, it's a, not the Fally Varus. He's playing on hit. He's playing just normal AD Varus. So these longer fights are so much stronger as they're still fighting. Owner now trying to make his way out to safety. No dashes available, so steadfast presence won't do much. Faker now zooming in. The scoop goes a little bit wide. The knockback ready to go just in case the counter punch comes. Engage will be denied. T1 can just set their sights on the Drake. A bloody back and forth. They push him out, sure. Tarzan gonna get away, but T1 will take the objective right off the back of it. Hong and Gala around, Tarzan is sniffing, but it's gonna be too little, it's gonna be too late, so it's about the fight if it's about anything. On to Kuma, follow up is there. Owner there not gonna connect, Zik on the backside. Hostile takeover is clean, and again, there's no cleanse available for Gala. It stops the play for now. Zika trying to find one. Owner surely should fall here. Still standing because of the bailout, but he will eventually die. LNG get the kill. That is a big investment, though. Yes, they get the kill, but they lose the dragon, and Zayus is gonna have this uh, free way with the top side turret. T1 are still looking for a player. I don't know about that. Have to be careful. Kerry and Guma continuing to back up. Three seconds left oh, of Guma Yushi's ultimate. There's no TPs. Not with Alibaris, cannot one-shot the wave. Look at the hex gate. Faker's on his way. Ulti available for Tarzan in just a couple of seconds here. Counting down, ticking away. Yeah, they can't do it. Faker gonna try to cover early ult to try to make it out safety. T1 backing off, are they gonna kill? LNG linger for a bit too long, not respecting the burst. And here comes Faker, Tarzan. 
getting shredded by the soldier. One more is going to do it. The Emperor of Sharima finding the double. The double kill for the king of the LCK gets down to the bot lane, and Faker feels like he is on fire in this series. Showing up huge for T1, but LNG, they made it way too obvious. The dive was taking way too long, and look at the handshake to set it up. Yeah, the big thing here is that you can sense the desperation from LNG. They desperately want to try and get a lead somewhere, but especially with Hex Gates, you need to know the timings. You have so much less time. The wave is so far up, and even with them pulling, trying to get it to crash earlier, it's not enough. I mean, they were down there, and they knew that their opponents saw the dive coming for, I want to say, 30-plus seconds. There was a lot of time to respond to this play. You cannot be that slow against a team this good. You have to respect their ability to react. And T1 now, two Dragons up, 2,000 gold in the lead, and it's a Hextech Soul that is on the table here. Plus, a monstrous lead. Azeka has tried to come down to the team now multiple times, while Zayas has been farming it up, farming plates, getting a CS advantage. He's now up over 40 CS, farmed multiple plates on the top side. That is a 13, nearly 1,400 gold lead for Zayas in the 1v1. That is going to be so hard for them to answer. And, and the one lead that was still there for LNG was Scout, who has still maintained the CS lead. But because of the kills, I don't think Faker is going to be substantially behind in his item finishes. Doesn't have a Mythic now, but... Push back. Delays because of the Crown Shockwave now pulling him back under tower. Faker keeping this one going. Trading alt for alt, not a bad deal. Again, Scout the most fed member of the team. Both sides will walk away with their lives. T1 now looking like they want to play towards this Herald. They have mid prio, they have the vision, and they're going to be starting it up here. There's just no way to contest. You look at the top lane itemization, it is not even close. Zay is monstrously strong, and Zika just still trying to scrape up the gold for his first item. Doing what they can. Hong can't even clear the vision. Gallo, one item. He's doing all right, but he cannot face check in. Tarzan might step into the area just to try to attempt to steal, but it's too little, it's too late. Again, T1, the ones dictating the pace of the game just as it was in Game 1 and Game 2. They had to fight a little bit harder to get it this time around, but still they remain in control. And this makes that third Dragon that much harder because T1 are likely to save the Herald, drop it down mid lane prior to that third Dragon coming up here. Owner will just push Tarzan off. They'll secure the top tier one, so they don't even need to use the Herald. Just get a quick reset, go down towards mid, set up your vision through mid, down towards that Dragon, drop the Herald on spawn, go towards that third Dragon, and LNG have got to decide, with their year on the line, do we contest? And a large part of it goes down back to the play that Owner made very early on. Because I think the strongest part in the early to mid game for LNG is specifically that Renekton and uh, Sejuani combo. They literally didn't get to use it at any point because Tarzan has been on the back foot right from the get-go, allowing Zayus to play basically an isolated 1v1, which with the Jace, Baker he's always going to win. In the darkness, coming through the pushback onto Zayus to the skies, dunked down, and T1 just running the rift. It's dominance from T1. This one quickly getting out of hand as owner going to be chasing down Tarzan. He's got to run. Scout pushing out that tier one bot, but... Zooming in. Alti goes a little bit wide, but the second half of the route on the Chain of Corruption will catch. Owner wants to keep this 1v1 going. Scout now retreating. Scout LGB. now coming in. Stun goes in. The pullback nice Cancel. from Scout. Buying a bit more time. And now again, the follow-up. The steadfast presence. And who is steadfast if not T1 in the face of elimination? Three back-to-back -back clean early games as they fight against LNG. And the only saving grace there is Faker ends up going down. Even with the flash mistimed, it will end up giving over a kill to Scout, but T1, they're still going to take that play. And right now, T1... Again, the story has been dominance in a way that I just don't think we expected. Even if you favor T1 in the series, I imagine you would think that it was close, but these kind of plays are T1 flexing. And they're really big is the initial damage that Scout's able to absorb with his crown, right? The, uh, and then the follow-up, the fact that Zeus doesn't actually get to flash the Shockwave. But even with that and the fact that Faker goes down, I think that T1 is still going to be able to set up again. I feel like, th has this happened every single game? Like, free yep. Drakes? This early on is Tarzan. Tarzan! That's your side of the rift, Zeus. Oh, Back away, Gala off to the side. He can root up two. Follow up autos there. Roots. No, this buying a bit more time with the hostile takeover. Now they're now autoing each other. They're just killing each other. LNG, the fight instantly turned to beautiful from Terry of a scout. Can't get the damage. It is not enough. 
T1 are going to keep the chase going. Faker's going to take the hex hit. He wants to wrap behind them. Look at mid. Mid, they're going to try to get both towers. They'll prevent the charge on the tier one by killing it off. So they're going to push in that Herald and go for two towers off of the play. And off of the delay there from T1, they get a kill. They take two towers. They're going to get a third charge mid as well. And they got the hex deck Drake. With all that going on as well, Soul Point again at 18 minutes with a Hextech Soul. And most of these games have been about T1 being one step ahead. And now it feels like they're three steps ahead. They're getting three objectives for every one thing that LNG manages to fight for. And while it initially looked okay, a beautiful ultimate from Caria stopped that play completely. Again, no cleanse on Gala. Took the Ghost, wanted more mobility to stay away from champions like Poppy, but it is not paying off. And I just, I just want to, the gold lead right now on top lane is almost 4,000. It's like 3,500 gold in favor of Zeus. So no one can match this Jace. So T1 can just keep pressing their advantages in the side lanes. And I think that's also the reason why the top side play doesn't work. T1 are very aware of where everyone of LNG is at the map at any given point. And we have seen these kind of compositions really struggle time and time again when you don't have a lot of engage options. There's just nothing you can do when you fall behind. And that is the position that LNG are now in. So they're going to have to get creative. They're going to have to find picks. They're going to have to find a miracle. But T1 have been so bulletproof in their advancement of the game. Down, carry a carry a over staying. Will get cut Come down here, not quite enough life! You can't even get the face checking support. Ah, oh, it just hurts so much for LNG. Nothing going their way. LNG cannot get lucky, not even once. And again, now Desperation strikes in the mid lane, just trying to get something back. That's Gala's ghost gone. For LNG, every play now, every major move on the map is a gamble because T1 will always take something from you in return. So if you cannot find purchase, if you cannot find an effective fight or an angle to leverage the strength that Scout has, you could very well lose this game. And you can see desperation setting in as they go for wilder and more aggressive plays, as more and more picks slip through their fingers as Karia walks away with 50 HP on that pick. But, but this is a problem. Right now as LNG, you have a losing side lane. So what you want to do is try and force an advantageous 4v4. But how are you going to force? Right, you're playing into Poppy, you're playing into Azir. You have no engage. Owner goes in, and he goes right back out. Vase rush Poppy, nigh untouchable. The crown has been popped, and T1 are starting the bear, and LNG, your year is on the line right here, right now. How do they get in? Can they make it work? Tarzan stepping forward, frontlining, the handshake pulls them back, the Baron already gone. There's no fight left, and still Owner goes in, finds the knockup on two. They cut the back line, they're just forced to back away. But again, discipline is the story for T1. They got what they came for, and they walk away. T1 get everything, they get the TP off Zika, they get the Baron, they're pushing down that top lane, and they're gonna be able to answer mid. Maybe you lose the tier one, but look at Carrier, he's setting up for Hostile play. Hostile takeover, shockwave there. Hostile takeover, a little bit of damage here. Faker off to the side, owner backing away. Just the tier one and the objective bounty taken. This is a five versus four. Zayas is just pushing in the top side of the map. That's their most fat member, he's not even there. And this is just dominance from T1. It's just continued to be more and more oppressive. They were a bit slow in some of those other games. Taking control, steady, again, not getting over aggressive, but their lead is nigh insurmountable. They've got three Drakes in a minute. They will have soul, and those LNG can stop them. And it really feels like you poked the giant here. T1 have awakened in the quarterfinals. The last hope of the LCK, and it's looking like a damn good one. This was a team that during summer, and, and obviously with all the circumstances, was struggling to make plays, but even before that, and this I really want to highlight, even before Faker struggled with his injury, the team was already struggling. You could tell how much difficulty they suffered from the fact that at MSI, they got beaten very one-sidedly by BLG. They were the team that was supposed to get it done after Genji got knocked out, and... It really feels like, again, when we get to Worlds, T1 are just not the same team. Yeah, and it's something that Guma talked about in his interviews, you know? That time away, giving him the space to become the player that he wants to be, to become greater, is now Faker breaking in the mid lane. Again, Tarzan can fish for the pick. They might be able to find it here. Can they get Faker down? The pushback is still there. Faker trying to slide, trying to glide out to safety. The root is there. The damage follow-up is not, however. Caria, the flash in, the handshake onto Scout. You will not take his mid laner. Isaiah is pushing down the bottom side. They can retreat back to a Hextech soul. No answers remaining for LNG. This feels like checkmate. 
from T1. An incredible series that they have played. LNG have looked helpless to answer any of the plays from T1. And it's Hextech Soul with a on-hit Varus, Azir with Nashers, and a monster fat chase! And Zeus, full confidence play. There's no reason he needs to do that, but he does it anyway! Zeus puts Zika six feet under, and he's looking to seal the deal. Another solo kill for the five, zero and zero, Jace. Complete dominance. LNG no longer have the game in their hands. They are praying that T1 slip up, that T1 make a mistake, that T1 are overconfident. Zeus, maybe that was their opportunity on the bottom side, but Zeus makes it work anyway with his massive gold advantage. LNG are praying, but God is on T1, and it's Faker leading the team, showing up in this series huge, outplaying Scout across both game one and two in that lane, and really showcasing his class. And it has been permanent. This would be the eighth semifinals at Worlds that Faker would advance towards. Never has he been eliminated in the quarterfinals, and he clearly does not want to let that start today. And that prestige and pedigree when he can show up like this, when he hasn't been the center cool. of the story for T1 for so much of the year. Uh, it's just a reminder of how world-class this player is. Uh, and coming into today, I think there was a very real fear for a lot of fans. This T1 roster has already been under so much pressure. It just comes with playing for T1 as an organization. And particularly given how much they have struggled with consistency internationally when it comes to actually closing the deal, the added pressure of them possibly um, failing to have an LCK representative would have been the first time ever, right? That we have four representatives from the same region. But T1, it doesn't look like the pressure's getting them whatsoever. Feels like a victory march down the mid lane. Inhibitor knocked down. Again, T1 taking their time, don't need to overcommit. They have the waves on their side, they have the soul on their side, the gold lead, every advantage they could want. No reason to risk anything. It is slow, it is steady, it is controlled, it is massive damage. Gala firing back with the Inferno multi just to generate a little bit of space, but Scout getting chunks down. Don't even need a wave, just tearing through the tower as life bars shrink on the side of JDG, or LNG, excuse me, hope dwindling. JDG on the minds of T1 looking ahead to the semifinals. Zayus just isn't missing. It's ridiculous. It's like 20 shock blasts in a row that this guy has hit. He's monster fed. And he is just having them Can't downloaded. Take back, down to the wall. Zayus firing up with so much damage down. Go Zika. The pushback is massive. Gala knocked out at T1 eyes on the prize. And it's the God of Thunder. He loves his lightning champions and Jace was always his most iconic. And in this final game, Zayus shows why he still pulls it out. The final push now, LNG, one last desperate hold, but they've got nothing left. And even as every other LCK team falls away, Faker stays standing. T1 stays standing. The last light of the LCK burns bright, and Busan is ahead to the semifinals. And what a setup for semis this is, because I had faith in T1 coming into this series, but I thought that this was going to be a hard-fought battle. But T1, they threw a bunch of curveballs at LNG, and they just weren't able to find a consistent response. It looks so difficult to answer T1 in the draft. They were on point with the draft. They were on point with the play. They may be the last remaining team from the LCK, but damn, is it a good one. This team was on fire, absolutely obliterating LNG. And LNG, may I remind you, that went 13 out of 13 possible games against JDG that played them closer than anyone in the LPL that many people, myself included, had ranked as the second best team from the LPL. And T1 made it look easy. T1 did, and every second counts. And thanks to the reliable Cisco Network, Faker arriving just in time to prevent the bot lane dive and securing himself a double kill. I mean, you look at this game, an incredible set of plays. We take a look back at this one. And coming in, right, you know how much it would have meant for Scout if he was able to get the win here. But unfortunately in this one, 
Not going to be the case. Faker with the timing, able to keep his bot lane alive. And I think that this really showcased the desperation of LNG in this series. This is a team that was known for their control, their ability to pick fights. But today, we didn't get to see that. And obviously, condolences to LNG. Can't be happy with that performance. We're not able to withstand the sheer quantity of bot lane adaptations, the aggressive maneuvers in game three from owner especially to shut down Tarzan. And on the day T1 showed up, and not only T1 again, Faker, everyone's gonna be excited about Faker always, but him dominating and dismantling Scout in this manner gets everybody hyped up for this JDG series. Scout was on fire throughout summer, throughout most of the Swiss stage as well. And I was thinking if there was going to be that massive advantage for LNG, it would be in the mid lane. But it was Faker in games one and two that made such a massive difference. You know, beating Scout in that 1v1 and Zayas in this final game. It's a masterclass on the Jace. Got ahead early. The mistimed gank there from Zika and Tarzan. Tarzan getting solo killed. Owner taking him down. And then once Zayas had that flash advantage, he just never let go of that advantage. Slammed it home. And in that late game, it was absolute dominance. I mean, he ends the game 6.7 thousand gold ahead of where the Renekton was. And coming into the day, I thought that the jungle matchup was going to be pivotal. I did not expect it to be this one-sided, because I do truly think that as, as good as owner played, we also saw some of the continued struggles of Tarzan when it comes to these high-pressure situations, and particularly against T1. It's not the first time that we've seen this player have such a rough one. And I think people are going to be so ridiculously excited for T1 JDG. The draft oh, preparations yeah. from JDG are going to have to be immaculate, because I don't know if there's really anyone you can practice against that can replicate what Guma and Carrier were doing in the bot lane, the creativity that they brought out, the way that they executed on that to dominate. It pushed Hong onto an enchanter, and that meant they had no engage in that final game. They had no recourse once they fell down, but it felt like they were painted into the corner. Well, and I think overall, ultimately, as Busan goes absolutely nuts, um, there's just... This level of creativity that you hear about in scrims every year at Worlds that never makes it to stage. But T1 are the team that brought it to stage today, that make it look good. And now all your draft planning has to factor in these extra things. Can we ever pick Kai'Sa against a team that is willing to pick Senna, that has shown that they can shut it down? The puzzle, the equation for JDG gets so much more complicated. And to be fair, at MSI, I thought that JDG T1 series was my favorite series of the tournament. Like, the level of play was absolutely ridiculous. And I love that we get a rematch. I can't wait to see it, but for now, let's send it down to the stage for an interview with Faker and Gumiushi with translation provided by Jisun. Guys, we are here joined by Faker and Guma Yusi on the side of T1. Congratulations on the win. Faker, you just 3-0 LNG. How do you feel? I had a bit of a feeling that we were going to get 3-0 today, and I think our performance was also on a decent level. So I'm really happy with my team's performance and our team play. What about you, Guma Yusi? We were the only team survived from the LCK, so I was like, we have to win this. And then eventually we got a 3-0 win, so it feels amazing. Faker, just like Guma Yusi just mentioned, all three other LCK teams got eliminated already, so... You guys were the last hope of the LCK. Did you feel any extra pressure about this? I saw you meditating before the match started. I always try to just focus on the match itself only. So I don't. I try my best not to care about the given situations. I only focus on the game. Guma, you see, today we were able to see a lot of unorthodox picks on the bottom lane. Nila Senna deal and then various Ash Comp as well. It looks like you guys are practicing the laning phase a lot. Me and Kyria together performed together for such a long time, so we had a lot of options to opt into. Right now, I don't think we have a set meta at the moment. 
So we are going to be the trailblazer of the meta, and I'm sure that our choices are correct. And T1 did not lose a single Drake in the series. And with this win, Faker, you are keeping your undefeated record up against LPL teams at Warriors in a best of five series and best of three series. What do you think about that? Well, I mean, maybe that's why also all the fans were expecting more and had high hopes about it, but I don't care about the records and you know, numbers. I just want to focus on how hard we prepare. What about Iguma, you see? T1, they don't lose the LPL. Wonderful. Now, heading on to the semifinals, we have three LPL teams and one last LCK team. And you are going up against JDG. Another rematch between you and Ruler. You know, Ruler has some debts from the MSI. And also, I'm going to make sure that he gets to recall some of the memories from last year. I'm pretty sure Ruler is watching this interview right now. Anything you want to say to him? Ruler, congratulations on the gold medal from the Asian Games. So I will win the world. What about your faker? What do you think is the most important part heading up, heading into the JDG series in the semifinals? I always mentioned, even in the Swiss stage, that I really want to go up against JDG as soon as possible. I just want to have a great game together. And I am confident that T1 can win up against JDG. So we will just do as we normally do to prepare for the series and do our best on stage. Guma, you see, you once mentioned that you and Keria are the strongest bottom duo at Worlds. What is your mindset for semifinals? We will do our best during the preparation to do our best, you know, and show the best at semifinals. And I'll see you guys at Seoul. Lastly, Faker. All the LCK fans were so desperate to see T1 win today. Anything you want to say to the fans? We were able to get a very clean win today at quarterfinals. We will make sure to repeat this at the semifinals as well. Thank you so much for your support. And that was the interview from Faker Gumayusi after their victory up against LNG today. And I'm going to wrap up the interview translation. Thank you. They are very loud. They've been loud all day. I think they've been keeping it in for three days. <laughs> and then today they just got to scream for not even three hours straight because it was faster yeah. than that, but absolute domination. Um, Guma a little bit more cheeky than Faker there. Faker there, you know, we took it seriously and all that. And Guma saying, well, we don't lose to the LPL. So. <laughs> I'm just so glad we got to be here in this audience yeah. to experience it because you could feel it. The whole country is giving all yeah. their power to T1 and man, did they slam. It's crazy. Yeah, and I mean, like, we talked about how instrumental Faker has been to this team and his international performances never finishing lower than the semifinal. Like, that's some people's career highs to steal yeah. something that my friend just tweeted. Um, I, another thing I really liked from that interview, though, is Faker touching upon how he was like, we are going to dictate the pace of the meta from now on, right? Like, we believed in our picks, we think they're really good, and we are going to dictate this pace. And I feel like we saw that through all of their games, especially their Felios answers, because there were so many ranged answers for what Aphelios wants to do. It not only did LNG play poorly, but I thought T1 drafted super well on red side all three times, and then additionally had incredible early game plans for their drafts. And I think it's the coolest thing, the fact that we got to see the Neela Senna come out when you think, oh, okay, we're going for the Tam Kench. The Renata was still able to come out, and even though we got the answer of the Melio, it didn't matter in the long run. I think T1 have a really, really good grasp of this. And when we started off, 
the top of the day, we're like, why does the LPL look so good? We're like, well, these these teams seem to have a better grasp of what's coming into the meta, but instead, it's actually T1 that are catching LNG off guard. It is so satisfying <laughs> to see teams change up the meta. You know, yep. when people get bored of the same stuff getting picked over and over and over, and everyone's going, blue side, so OP, blue side, 80 <laughs> plus percent win rate, and T1 slam it, and they use counter pick so yeah. effectively, and Guma said it best on stage when he's talking about me and Karia have been together for so long. We have so many options. I'm very excited to see what they're going to do for the rest of this tournament. Yeah, someone who played extremely well as well was uh, extremely well as well. Played phenomenally. Was owner. He's our Oppo player of the series, and especially in terms of the the story that we touched on earlier, Emily, in terms of the fact that he's not been having the best year, and you saw that he was the one who suffered the most when Faker wasn't there to have such a statement series today. Yeah, I mean, I think the big thing with owner is when I talk about the early game plans they had around these drafts. Owner is at the forefront of that, like these level ones they had. The invade that I'm sure we're going to see <laughs> upcoming um, with the poppy onto Tarzan. Yeah. Like, he completely kept Tarzan out of these games right here. <laughs> this was so smart from him after Tarzan blows everything. <coughs> Going back in, sorry, I'm losing my voice. It's all right. To kill him. Um, and then it can't be understated how like poor he looked throughout a lot of summer. Like he really, really looked lost. So to see him come and make such a statement performance today is so good for G1 going forward. I, I think that's actually probably the biggest part because it was hard to choose today. Zayu slammed, yeah. Baker yeah. slammed, yeah. Guma and Karia both slammed, but the lowest expectations were on owner because he has been so unreliable for this team. And he showed up and he also slammed. So he did. He gets extra credit. <laughs> very nice to know, uh, indeed. Also, that flash when Carrier flashed, I think it was like at the end of the game because mm. Faker was about to die. And it was just, it was all working yeah. out. Everything. We'll see if it keeps going. Let's take a look at the bracket because T1 is still in a difficult position. They only have LPL teams left in the bracket and they have the most formidable one of all in JDG next up. I know, but the thing was, LNG took JDG the distance every single time they faced. Up. Now, I think this was a dis disappointing performance from LNG, but if you're T1, you're going to be riding off the back of this going, we're going to take on the world, and if I'm JDG, I'm going to be worried about that. They're taking on the world. They're just taking on the LPL. The, yeah. world, yeah. the world is the LPL at this point, and T1 are going to go through all the top teams if they want to win. If they want to win, we're standing by for an interview with Karia in just a little bit. And um, a lot of people tweeted a lot of this, but Jat in particular had a great tweet where he said, eight worlds for Faker, eight semifinals, never lost a best of five to the LPL at Worlds in eight world championships. And, and all the teams left are LPL teams. I yep. mean, you got to dream. You got to dare to dream when it comes to it. And you can see that it all comes down to the performance of the day, you know? Well, and also the stage is set, right? Because of all <laughs> the yeah. narratives we talked about around ah, this team. <laughs> team. I know everyone hates that word, but like, honestly, they like this team, they, they came out and they said, you know, some of their players have said, this is the last time we might be together as a roster. We talked about how this roster has come like so close to only fall short at the finish line at international events and how that's kind of colored their dominance that they've had over the past few years. And so now the stage is set, three LPL teams, T1, the lone LCK team, on home soil in Korea. It would mean so much for this team to continue forward in this tournament. But also, if you get the fact that T1 takes down JDG, you have BLG on the opposite side, they've taken down Genji, and <laughs> then they meet for that MSI rematch. I mean, we got this already coming through, like T1 manhandled BLG at Worlds so far. So that could be such an incredible series if T1 are able to go the distance and Weibo don't f uh, fall to BLG. Yeah, it should be kind of the key. Have you improved enough specifically over the LPL since MSI to, I mean, the stage is set perfectly if you believe that you have done that. Uh, I was a miss. It wasn't Karyad's Gumiyushi that is uh, setting up with Jisun and with Lore in just a little bit. And we can talk about that. He's going to be facing Ruler. He brought it up in the stage interview already in terms of last year. <laughs> I hope you remember. We're going to ignore MSI for a bit. Um, but it's true. It's going to be such a formidable AD carry matchup as well. Especially yeah. when you look at the drafts that we've seen going into that bot lane at the moment. Like, we got the, the Ash Varus coming out. I mean, the Varus was incredible over the entire course of this. We got the Neela coming through. It even feels like they've got more in the tank, which I'm excited mm -hmm. to try and find. It feels like the T1 bot lane are kind of putting a stake as the best bot lane in the tournament right now. 
especially after a performance like that. And when you're going up against Ruler and Missing, that's really going to decide if they're able to take that mantle for this tournament. Personally, my, my favorite tournaments are always the ones where you do have those secret picks held till deep in the tournament. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody remembers SKT and Rocks Tigers and the evolution of the support counter picks and the Zyra support coming out and then the Misfortune ca counter pick mm -hmm. coming to it. Those types of things, the creative way that they can get an advantage towards the very end of a tournament and kind of hold it close that deep into a tournament is what is so exciting. And that's what this, this T1 team is doing. They're so flexible, they have so many options. Yeah. The interview is ready, so Laura and Jisun are standing by backstage with Guma Yushi. It's not ready yet. I've been, the <laughs> second time I've been hoodwinked. I, I don't care. something to say on Kobe's <laughs> point, so it's fine. Oh, uh, it is ready. Uh, are you trolling me, production, or is it ready? Are they standing by in the post-game interview? <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Jacques. We're back here in the interview area with Guma Yushi, AD Carey of T1. Thank you so much for joining us. And young SEO. And congrats to making it to semifinals. I want to mention what happened this week for the LCK. As you were the last bastion of hope representing the LCK here at Wells, what was your reaction seeing all the teams falling one by one and coming into today knowing that you were the last hope for the region? 우선 가장 먼저 이번 주에 LCK 일어났던 일들에서 여쭤보고 싶은데요. 사실은 이제 지켜보시면서 어, 정말 매 판마다 LCK 팀들이 탈락하면서 탈락하는 걸 지켜보시면서 어떤 마음이 드셨는지 그리고 그렇기 때문에 우리가 마지막 희망이다라는 걸 알고 오늘 경기 임하셨는데 좀 어떠셨나요? 어 일단 젠지 대진표를 보고 나서 젠지와 결승에서 만나고 싶지는 않다 이런 생각을 했었는데 어 8강에서 이제 LCK 모든 팀들이 떨어질 거라고는 생각을 못 해가지고 조금 당황스러웠지만 저희한테는 어떻게 보면은 좀더 주목받을 수 있는 기회일 수도 있겠다라고 생각을 해가지고 오늘 꼭 이기고 싶다라는 마인드로 준비해왔던 것 같습니다. Well, yeah, looking at the bracket when it was decided, I was like, oh, I don't want to go up against Gen.G at finals. And then I was not expecting to see all the other LCK teams getting eliminated in quarters. So I was pretty much flustered. But at the same time, I took it as maybe we can be under the spotlight, you know, maybe we can get more attention. So I did not want it. I did not want to lose this series. And I'm so happy that we were able to get the win. And I think it makes sense with the approach you have with the meta so far. And you said on stage that you were the leaders here at Wells when it comes to understanding the game and how to approach the drafts. And I know that T1 often was criticized for their drafts in international events in the past. Is there anything you've been doing differently this time in the way you prepped, scrims, training and everything compared to the previous international events that you've been playing? 그리고 방금 전 무대 인터뷰에서도 T1이 이제 메타를 좀 개척해 나가는 그런 어, 입장이 될 것이다라고 말씀해 주셨는데요. 오늘도 좀 다양한 픽을 많이 보여주셨습니다. 사실은 이전 국제 대회에서는 T1이 국제 대회에서 준비해온 뱀픽 전략 같은 게좀 아쉽다라는 비판을 듣기도 했는데 이번 월드는 그럼 준비 과정이나 스크린 뭐 훈련 과정에서 좀 다른 식으로 가져온 게 있을까요? 어 그냥 이번 메타가 좀 원딜들이 그냥 다 밸런스가 일정한 것 같아가지고 여러 픽들이 다 나올 수 있었던 것 같고 저희가 워낙에 지금까지 같이 해오면서 해온 바텀 픽들이 많았기 때문에 그런 데이터들을 이용해가지고 여러 픽들을 시도해보고 이제 실전으로 대입했던 것 같습니다. Uh, I think right now, Warriors meta, especially on the bottom lane, I think all the AD carry picks are pretty much balanced and even so, we have a lot of options available. We can try many different stuff and also me and Carrie, we have been performing together for such a long time. So that means we already tried a lot of different duos on the bottom lane. So we were able to try something more, cook something more uh, in the practice games and then we were able to also give it a shot um, on a competitive match. And taking a step back, I want to mention the documentary that T1 released this week about you your career, your past. We knew that your older brother was a pro player as well, but it feels like esports run through your blood in general with your father also being a video games player. What does it mean to you to be the last representative of the LCK here at Wells in Korea, but also following the legacy of your family, representing them in the international stage? 그리고 이제 최근에 공개됐던 T1 구마유시 선수의 다큐멘터리에서 보니까 이제 형 분께서도 프로 게이머로 활동하셨고 또 아버지께서도 게임을 즐겨 하신 걸로 들어왔는데 구마열 씨의 피해는 정말 e스포츠가 흐르는 것 같습니다. 어, 그렇기 때문에 이번 월드의 또 LCK 마지막 남은 대표 팀일 뿐만 아니라 또 이제 가족들의 그런 e스포츠적인 유산을 이어간다는 의미에서 어, 마지막 남은 LCK 팀으로서 지금 각오가 어떠신가요? 어, 이제 또 한국 
땅에서 열리는 월즈인데 결승에서 이제 LPL 대전이 나오면 은 많은 한국 팬들이 슬퍼할 것 같아서 저희가 꼭 결승에 가서 우승을 해야겠다는 생각이 있습니다. So Worlds right now is in Korea and I'm pretty sure our fans are going to be so sad to see LPL versus LPL at finals. So I want to promise that we're going to make it to the finals and make our fans happy and win it all. And next step, JDG, you versus Roller. You said that you are the best bot lane at Worlds right now. Can you tell our viewers why T1 should be feared in semifinals against JDG? 그럼 말씀하신 것처럼 결승에 가시려면 이제 다음 매치 4강전에서 JDG를 잡아야 하는데요. 또 룰러 선수와의 리매치잖아요. 이제 구말 선수가 굉장히 자신 있게 우리가 최, 세계 최고 바텀 듀오다라고 말씀하신 만큼 어, T1의 바텀 듀오를 두려워해야 되는 이유가 뭐라고 생각하시나요? 어, 저희는 아직 꺼내지 않은 픽들이 많습니다. We have so many more picks to unfold. It's going to be interesting to watch. Thank you so much. In w 감사합니다. Good morning, Yossi. Thank you so much, j i s a n as well. And Shox, over to you. Thank you so much. Incredible work, uh, j i s a n and Lore. As always, lovely to hear from Gumayushi. I, I love it. I mean, Kobe said it already, but in terms of kind of just like, no, we're going to dictate the meta. Yep. How, whatever that may look like. What Darren makes Yumi, us... you down? <laughs> sure. No, <laughs> no, actually. Um, we I'd were rather bear as ash. Uh, we were setting up for the interview, so Emily, maybe I'll give uh, this to you. Uh, LNG, I think, just as a send-off, as we do for every team that gets oh, knocked yeah. out. Uh, to me, very disappointing because this is, you know this isn't how they usually play, right? Yeah, I mean, I think they definitely got, like, absolutely attacked in draft. Like, I don't think they really had an answer for these red side drafts coming out from T1. I do also think we did see some uncharacteristically sloppy misplays from them like we do know that lng is technically a slower paced team when compared to other lpl teams but in particular scout and tarzan really really underperformed today um they had a lot of like individual mistakes that we are absolutely not used to seeing from these players scout in particular has been so lights out this summer that it is really unfortunate to see them come out and have this poor of a performance. And I think as well, even looking at the bottom side of the map, it's kind of heartbreaking to see for a guy like Gala, where he's got some of these very unique picks like the Kaisa, but he's also a massive Ziggs player. Yep. And like things that you could try and do to combat that bot side, we never really got to see. It felt like LNG never just took to the rift. And I think the only real like silver lining there was like Zik in the top lane, who's supposed to be the, you know, the guy who's not actually got <laughs> the experience, was the one that actually kind of showed up on the day and did He's at least somewhat of a job against Zeus Su yeah. in the top lane. Yeah, it, oh man, it, it was really rough to watch because you su you feel for the players in those moments when some of those unforced errors are coming through. They're the ones that are hardest on themselves, and you know they're going to get so much flack for it on the, on the biggest stage for that mm -hmm. th that to happen. That's what uh, I feel the most. So many levels to it. Like Gala usually at MSI lights out worlds, and then Scout last year. Versus Zeka, versus someone who arguably had, you know, a career high performance, obviously, but he got haunted by what followed him after that. Can mm -hmm. he do it in those important stages? And he played so well this entire year and all of Worlds until this series. It's, it's heartbreaking, but you don't win Worlds if you don't show up every single day. But that's right. the thing. Sometimes the memory is just the last performance that you had. And when it was Zeka at Worlds last year, Anna was now failing miserably, let's be honest, against Faker here today. It does well, feel like that's what... I mean, history is going to be recorded. Day belongs to the victors. I mean, that's why it means so much to win Worlds. It is so incredibly hard. You have to be the very best right now. Yes, you do. And with that, we're going to sign off for today. We'll be back in a few days for the semifinals here live from Busan as well. Thank you for watching. T1 as the last remaining LCK team against the three LPL teams in the bracket. The stage is set for them, but it might just be the LPL as well. Let's see. Uh, that will do it for us in the World's Quarterfinals for 2023. We'll be back here on Saturday with the first semifinal between Billy Billy Gaming and Weibo Gaming from the LPL. Goodbye. I'm falling it off. <laughs>、Uh, we're gonna look for the shove. He's gonna manage to catch only Zeus in the meantime. Baker still standing strong. Shockwave getting good damage down. T1 quick to force the fight. The Herald still connects. Now Baker gonna be in trouble, but again, there's no follow up damage here. Oriana just sitting pretty. Thank you very much, Tarzan. That was terrible. And now w h a t the h e l l T1! They're living rent free in the heads of LNG. Dragon Soul stolen, and now it's Gumayushi looking to tear through the entire team.
taking down so many members on the side of LNG. Healing as well. Can he find a target? He's going to flash back under the tower. Shock blast there. Baker making it out to safety. Scout now looking to fall off the healing. Now coming in, trying to find the one for one. But Scout will stand strong. But Gala, Gala. down forced to safety. Shock room stacked. Zayus can't find the angle. But the shutdown coming through for Baker. T1 taking the fight anyway. Scout given to the Aatrox as tribute. And now Gala's in trouble. T1 coming alive. They see the window of opportunity. They see the weakness in the armor of LNG. And they tear it asunder. Both sides squaring up with the big old goal up here. Flash in. Whoa, bang, first blood. Owner living up to his name. Continuing to step up. Desperate to get a little bit more here, but has to be careful. The mark now coming through. Bar is good damage. Guma wants to finish it. Oh. And he gets it. Absolutely outplayed. In the Baker going to try to cover early. Alt to try to make it out safety. T1 backing off. Are they going to kill? <laughs> LNG linger for a bit too long. And even as every other LCK team falls away, Baker stays standing. T1 stays standing. The last light of the LCK burns bright. And Busan is a head to the semifinals. What's your plan? Feel it. Feel it. Feel it.